from New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and 1036 leading retail stores from coast to coast present the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> this week's adventure, the case of the complicated poisoning at Eel Pie Island. Well, here it is, time for our weekly visit to Dr. Watson, but... Hello, his study's empty. Say, don't tell us the good doctor has forgotten his appointment. Certainly not. I'm out here on the terrace. Oh, yes, now we see him on the other side of the French door, stretched out in that deck chair. Come on out. Thank you. There's another for you, Mr. Harris. Make yourself comfortable and I'll divide a very superior sunset with you. <laughs> Fair enough, doctor. Hello, what's this you've got on? Joseph's coat of many colors certainly couldn't rival that one, doctor. Don't tell me that's one of Clippercraft's new sport jackets. Well, no. This is what we called a blazer in my younger days. Oh, yes. The sort of outfit Holmes and I used to wear punting on the Thames. As a matter of fact, my wife was going through an old trunk and ran across it the other day. Puts me in mind of the adventure of the poisoning at Eel Pie Island. A case at once violent and diabolically complicated. Yes, having decided to tell that story this afternoon, I appropriately... Don the old blazer for the occasion, don't you know? Well, what does Mrs. Watson think of it? Oh, she's threatened to, to, to leave me if I step off the premises in it. <laughs> I see what she means, Doctor. It is a bit, shall we say, uh, spectacular. Oh, that's the trouble with the rising generation, Mr. Harris. No individuality, no dash, no style. How do you expect to impress the young ladies of your acquaintance on summer picnics or beach parties and boating expeditions? Well, by wearing Clippercraft sport coats, of course, Dr. Watson. Mm, yes, I, uh, I seem to have led with my chin that time. Oh, not at all. Just you take Mrs. Watson along when you go down to look at the new Clippercraft tropical suits and sport jackets. She'll be pleased to take you anywhere in any of them, I'll bet you. And she'll be doubly pleased because they won't knock holes in the family budget either. The man who insists on Clippercraft clothes says goodbye to high prices insofar as his clothing budget is concerned, for Clippercraft clothes have never been anything but high in quality and low in price. And that goes for today, too, despite rising costs of materials and manufacturing. But great values like Clippercraft's would not be possible without the famous Clippercraft plan. The plan's the reason you can buy high-quality Clippercraft suits for only 40 to 47.50. Find tropicals for summer wear for only thirty-three seventy-five to forty dollars, and smart sport jackets for only twenty-six fifty. Yes, the great Clippercraft plan that concentrates the buying power of ten hundred thirty-six of the nation's finest stores from coast to coast provides steady year-round operation, reduces manufacturing and distribution costs, and delivers the savings to you. Now, for your own sake. We urge that you compare Clippercraft with clothes selling for many dollars more. See your Clippercraft dealer tomorrow. But now, back to the fatal poisoning on Eel Pie Island. Uh, the title sounds indigestible to begin with, Dr. Watson. Eel Pie Island. Look, is there really such a place? Oh, the ignorance of the man... If you'd ever been boating on the Thames, you'd know it well. Mm, yes, Eel Pie Island lies in the prettiest stretch of the river between Richmond and Hampton Court. Furthermore, it has a very popular inn which is famous for its ale and its eel pie. Oh, naturally. A cold, refreshing mug of ale after a pull up the river in the hot sun and a delicious slice of cold eel pie. Mm, I could certainly go over the first item, Dr. Watson, but... Uh... I'm not quite so sure about the second. You know, Mr. Harris, that's exactly what Holmes said some 20 or so years ago. It was Sunday afternoon and Mary was expecting some relatives for tea. Noticing my agonized expression, she handed me this blazer and suggested Holmes and I go for our annual June boating expedition up the Thames. Consequently, four o'clock found us in a four-oared skip, briskly skimming past Ham House. The Jacobean seat of the Earl of Dysart, back in 1610, of course. Oh, obviously. Yes, we were skimming. Holmes was as fresh as a daisy after a mile's pull up from Richmond. <laughs> I'm afraid I, I had begun to melt. Get 
you back into it, Watson. Broke. Broke. Oh. Watson, that's the third time you've missed count. Uh, Stroke. Sorry, Holmes, my, my stomach keeps getting in the way. Huh. That's what comes of being a married man. Meals at regular hours. Nothing oh. to jolt you out of your rut. Oh, I was jolted out of it four years when I rejoined during the late war. I enjoy my rut, thank you. I, I don't wish to be jolted out of it again. You mean you don't ever miss the old Baker Street days? Oh. The excitement? The suspense? The danger? Oh. I enjoy it all in retrospect. I say, Holmes, that's Eel Pie Island up ahead. Uh, what do you say we pull under those willows for a bit of a breather, eh? I don't need a breather. Mm. I wonder if the ale at the inn is as cool as I remember it. Brown, tangy, I can just feel it trickling down my throat. Uh, and the eel pie... Crust all flaky and tender. I have no interest whatever in eel, Watson. <clears throat> Nasty, slimy fish. Ugh. Besides, we're in duty bound to demolish the contents of the hamper Mrs. Watson prepared for us with such loving care. From the contents, I suspect she hoped we'd be gone a week. No, Watson. No eel pie. Stroke. <clears throat> Holmes, you unfeeling. However, I do think I could be interested in a mug of ale. Yes? Yes, Watson. They're right. Stroke. Thank God you have some human weaknesses. Ah, there we are, all tied up in ship shape. Watson, you unpack the hamper while I go for the ale. Oh, no, no, don't bother. I'll go. I... I want to stretch my leg. No, Watson, I'll go. I thought of it first. Oh, so you can have an extra mug while you're waiting. No, you don't. We both go for the ale. <laughs> Come along, then. Oh, careful. You nearly landed in the river. Oh, it's these white trousers. They must have shrunk since last summer. <laughs> Can't go bounding about like a mountain chamois the way you do. <laughs> That's a perfect day. What is more charming than the Thames on a Sunday in June? The little boats filled with the flower of the countryside, the... The dainty parasols, the, the airy dresses, the, the lacy petticoats so coquettishly displayed. I thought you were supposed to be a woman hater. <laughs> I was admiring the scene quite impersonally, Watson, from the artist viewpoint. Uh, I have artistic blood in my veins, you know, on my mother's side. Oh, Balderdash. Help! Help! I, I beg pardon. Holmes, oh, did you hear that? Yes, it's a fat woman in the purple bombazine of the next punt. She's managed to terrify completely the little wispy man who's her escort. You fool! Get a doctor! You want me to die? I'm a doctor, madam. May I be of assistance? Oh, yes, please. Please help us. Uh, my sister thinks she's been poisoned. I know I've been poisoned. It's, it's in my tea. I just made us a nice pot of tea. It was quite all right, Minnie. I drank some too, you know. My cup wasn't all right. It tasted bitter. Then why did you drink it? I didn't. Just a mouthful. Ooh, ooh, ooh. My stomach. The pain in my stomach. My neck felt stiff all day. Oh, oh, oh. The pain in my stomach. Here, the, the diaphragm is contracting. It. I shall want hot water. The tea kettle is still half full. I, I can light the spirit lamp. We haven't time. Salt. Have you some salt or mustard? We have both. Minnie always brings everything. Good, we shall have to give her a good emetic. Clean out her stomach. An emetic? No, I, 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 I won't take it. I, I won't. won't. Oh. Minnie, Minnie, don't. Oh, good Lord. I'm having convulsions. Yes, Mark, up the top of us. They scream. Horrible scream. The rhesus sardonicus, Watson. Chronic scandal. I'm afraid we're too late. Oh. Oh, dear. I do wish the police or the coroner would get here. It seems so awful to leave poor Minnie stretched out in the boat. Oh, that dreadful grin on her poor dead face. 
If only she hadn't suffered so before she died. She was very fortunate, Mr... Mr... Uh, Weatherby. Uh, Walter Weatherby. Uh, Minnie was my sister. Miss Weatherby was very fortunate, Mr. Weatherby. She died remarkably fast, all things considered. If she'd been a younger, stronger woman, death might have been delayed for hours, even days. I take it she had high blood pressure and weak heart. Yes, sir. Uh, and diabetes, too. We all have it in our family. Uh, that is all but Robert. Oh? Oh. Thank heaven she went quickly. I can't bear to see anyone suffer. I can't even bear to kill a fly. The only reason I keep that vermin killer in the potting shed is because the nasty things have been destroying my tulip bulb, don't you know? Oh, so that's where the strychnine came from. What strychnine? The strychnine that made your sister's cup of tea taste so bitter. Of course, Holmes. That's what brought on those convulsions. Strychnine, they're quite typical. Were they, Watson? But of course, the gasping for breath. The protruding eyeballs, the rigidity and convulsions. Uh, but there couldn't have been any strychnine in the tea. Uh, I drank four cups myself. Tell me, Mr. Weatherby, did your sister have anything in her tea that you didn't share? Cream? A drop of rum? A bit of mint? No, no. Nothing like that. We both took it weak uh, with a lot of milk. Oh, Minnie did have strychnine, of course. Uh, that is saccharine, I should say. Uh, I prefer to go without sweetening myself. We aren't allowed sugar, you know, uh, because of the diabetes. Saccharin, of course. She carried the pills in a box, a reticule? Oh, no, sir. Uh, she had a plain paper envelope. Uh, here it is on the floor of the pantry. Don't touch it. Don't touch it, I say. Oh, no, sir. Not if you say not. Hand it to me, Watson, with your handkerchief. Very well, Holmes. Hmm. Empty. She used up all the pills, I guess. And no wonder she had six cups of tea. Minnie did enjoy her afternoon tea, and she did enjoy all her meals. Uh, poor Minnie. Holmes, sir, uh, how do you account for the fact that the five previous cups were drunk without complications? Probably because only the sixth saccharin pill was poisonous and bitter. The shock of finding it poisoned, you know, to a woman with her heart, that certainly helped to bring on the convulsions. It was undoubtedly pure accident that pill was saved to the last. You say your sister suffered from diabetes, Mr. Weatherby. She doesn't look it. Oh, that's because my brother Robert took such good care of her, of all of us. He gives us injections of that new drug, insulin. Uh, they discovered it last year. It does wonders for people with diabetes, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my brother's been lecturing on it at all the medical schools all over England. By Jove, of course, your brother must be the famous Dr. Robert Weatherby. Obviously, Watson. Tell me, Mr. Weatherby, how long have you and your sister suffered from diabetes? Oh, uh, only about four months. Uh, my other sister, uh, Nellie, had it too. She died two months ago. She... Oh, dear. Poor Nellie. Uh, she was really my favorite, you know. Too far gone for the insulin to do much good, I suppose. Oh, no, sir. Uh, we None of us had any symptoms of diabetes before last year. I... I did have my dizzy spells, of course, uh, but we never thought it was anything like that. Oh, no. Thank heaven insulin was discovered in time for us. Uh, not that it seems to have saved Minnie or Nelly either. But surely you must realize that your sister didn't die of a diabetic seizure, Mr. Weatherby. Oh, no. Minnie went the same way as Nelly went, of poison. Uh, only uh, I didn't do it. You, you must believe me. I didn't do it. I say, Holmes, hmm? here comes a boat. It's turning in here. Yes. It's the police launch. Oh, thank heaven for that. I, I thought they'd never get here. Hello there! Is this where there's been a murder? <laughs> well, well, if it isn't our old friend, the bellowing beagle of Scotland Yard, Inspector Lestrade himself. <laughs> Welcome, Lestrade. Welcome aboard. We have quite a cargo for you to inspect. Uh, Paul! Uh, how in thunder did you get here? I am a bird of ill omen, Lestrade. I am attracted to a crime like a vulture to carrion. Oh, Holmes, really? Uh, so you admit it is a crime? Huh? A murder, Lestrade. A beautifully staged little murder. But look here. I, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. I, I wouldn't hurt a fly. Uh, oh, ho. So it's Mr. Walter Weatherby again. 
And I suppose this is another sister you've done away with so you could inherit her share of the Weatherby bills? No, I didn't do it. I didn't hurt Nellie either. I swear I didn't. I know. You slipped through our fingers the last time. We had our suspicions right enough, but we couldn't prove anything. The jury thought you looked so meek and mild, butter wouldn't melt in your mouth, so they brought in a verdict of suicide. <laughs> And the poison was found in her cough medicine that time. Which poison, Lestrade? Strychnine, Holmes. Oh. What else gives people convulsions? Like the woman just had here, they tell me. This chap's got a potting shed of vermin killer all full of strychnine. But I've kept it locked up ever since Nellie killed herself. I carry the key with me. Hmm, interesting. Uh, we don't need any of your fancy deductions this time, Holmes. This time we caught him red-handed. There was no one in the boat but him and his sister. He gave her a cup of tea and it killed her. He gave her six cups of tea, Lestrade. Only the last one seems to have contained anything suspicious. There it is on top of the hamper, and still three quarters full. Oh, really? I'm surprised you didn't empty it out. I never tamper with clues, Lestrade. I merely point them out. It's up to you to draw your own conclusion. Well, don't worry. I've done that already. This Weatherby chap's guilty, and he won't wiggle out of it this time. Mm -hmm. By the way, Lestrade, what do you make of the wool scarf? wrapped around the victim's neck. It's a hot day, but Minnie's wearing a purple scarf. Uh, next, I suppose you'll tell me she wasn't poisoned, she was strangled. Oh, no, I, I wouldn't... I mean, I'm not strong enough. Minnie was suffering from a stiff neck. It came on this morning. Uh, Robert suggested that I take her out on the river to see if the sun would break it out. Nevertheless, the scarf is significant, Lestrade, and the violent contractions of the diaphragm. Don't forget those. I suggest you have your best surgeon perform the autopsy. We won't need any autopsy if we find strychnine in that teacup. Oh, you'll find strychnine, Lestrade. Never fear. What makes you so sure? I tasted it, you know. I tasted it. Talk things over with any of the millions of men who wear Clippercraft clothes, and you'll soon find out why Clippercraft clothes have won more friends than any other label in America. Well dressed men are loyal to Clippercraft because Clippercraft is loyal to them. Clippercraft is devoted to just one thing giving you the best clothing value in America. Through the famous Clippercraft plan, you get the benefit of tremendous savings made by concentrating the buying power of 1036 of the nation's finest stores from coast to coast. Locally owned, independent stores. Stores you can trust. It's the biggest idea that ever hit the clothing industry and eased your clothing budget. Where else can you get such remarkably fine quality in suits for only 40 and 47.50, in tropicals for only 33.75 to $40, and in sport jackets for 26.50? The answer is... Nowhere else except in the fine stores everywhere that feature the Clippercraft label. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits, sport jackets, and tropicals. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. In Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B &B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. And now back to Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. We find them in the waiting room of the famous Dr. Robert Weatherby. Watson is decidedly ill at ease. I, I don't know why you insisted on coming here. To present our condolences, of course. After all, we were in at the death, as you might say. Holmes, really? And to find out more about this new drug. What's it called? Oh, yes, insulin. Yes, I might have known it was your insatiable thirst for information that brought you. Not your humane instincts. Of all the cold Shh, blooded... Shh, quiet, Watson. Someone's coming. Um, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Quite. The doctor will see you now. Uh, step this way, please. Oh, thank you. After you, Holmes. This was your idea. Well, well, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. This is indeed an honor. I'm indeed grateful for your efforts on my poor sister's behalf. 
My colleague, Dr. Watson, was the physician on the case, Dr. Weatherby. We, uh, that is, uh, everything possible was done, you understand. I, I can't begin to express my regrets. Oh, please don't blame yourself, Doctor. I couldn't have done more for her myself, I'm sure. An overdose of strychnine is so violent and so sudden, don't you know? Then the autopsy showed strychnine. There was no autopsy necessary, Mr. Holmes. The contents of the teacup proved the case. And then, of course, when my brother confessed... Confessed? Yes. It seems he had one of his dizzy spells while my sister was drinking her tea and lay down in the boat for a moment. He must have been unconscious for several moments. At least he doesn't seem to remember what happened during that length of time. Of course. A trance. Somnambulistic. He must have administered the poison while in a semi-conscious condition. Yes. Poor Walter. I've always known he subconsciously resented both his sisters. They were so big and robust. Walter was always rather frail. I suppose I should have had him committed after Nellie's death, but, well, somehow I couldn't persuade myself that he was really dangerous. I see. Would it shock you very much, Dr. Weatherby, if I were to assure you that your brother did not kill either of his sisters? But, Mr. Holmes, the evidence. The death struggle indicated strychnine. A strychnine was found in the teacup. He was the only person with her all afternoon. And then his confession. You can't get around that. I imagine your brother Walter takes rather easily to any form of suggestion, Dr. Weatherby. With your permission, I should like to have a talk with him. He's in Bow Street Jail, I understand. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Holmes. But I'm afraid you must postpone your interview until later in the day. when he's had time to recover from his insulin injection. He's already had it? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I was just about to go around to the jail and give it to him. Splendid. We'll go with you. Dr. Watson is particularly anxious to learn this new technique of administering insulin. Oh, uh, Holmes, really well, not... Some other time I shall be delighted. But what better time than the present? We promise not to discuss your sister's murder, Dr. Weatherby. But I understand... Well, that is, uh, Scotland Yard is in charge of the case. Would they permit interference? Scotland Yard has learned it's always wise to allow me to interfere, Dr. Weatherby. It so frequently saves them from making fools of themselves. Oh, this way, gentlemen, please. He's in here. Wait a moment till I unlock his cell. <laughs> Inside, please, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, Walter, we've come to see you. You remember us, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson? Oh. Oh, Robert. Robert, I, I didn't think you'd ever want to speak to me again. And, and these kind gentlemen, Robert, they did all that they could, Robert. Oh, it was too horrible the way she died. Easy, I old did... chap, easy. Oh, but how could I? Oh, my mind is all blurry. Everything is all confused. Yes, I... that's because you haven't had your insulin. That's right, Walter. Now, you just wait till I fix the hypodermic. You'll feel better in no time after your injection. Uh, just sit down, Walter. Roll up your sleeve. Well, well, quite a little party we're having here this morning. They told me you'd crashed in again, Holmes. Morning, Lestrade. Well, if it's against the regulations, Inspector Lestrade, I, I mean, that was his idea, not mine. I, he assured quite me... Quite that... all right, Dr. Weatherby. Scotland Yard grumbles a good deal about Sherlock Holmes' interference, but we found out it's sometimes a good idea to let him raise. Many thanks, Lestrade. As a matter of fact, you came just in time. We are about to witness a very interesting demonstration. Oh, oh, an injection of insulin isn't as drastic as all that, Mr. Holmes. In a few years, thousands of people will be getting insulin daily, injecting it themselves in all probability. Now, uh, hold out your arm, Walter. Then it's really quite harmless. I mean, even to a person not suffering from diabetes. Oh, yes, yes. It might accelerate the rate of metabolism slightly for a time, but nothing to worry about. Then Nellie's death and Minnie's death couldn't possibly have been caused by the injection you gave each of them the morning of the day in which they died. Good Lord, no. What a fantastic idea. Not so fantastic, Dr. Weatherby. I'm quite convinced that neither Minnie nor your brother here suffer from diabetes. Your sister Nellie I didn't see, unfortunately. My dear Mr. Holmes, without a blood test, how can you possibly tell? I have the eye of a trained diagnostician, Dr. Weatherby. The tone of the skin was too healthy, particularly in Minnie's case. No. 
I suggest you were giving your brother and sister injections for a much more sinister reason, Doctor. But that's preposterous. Even if they proved not to be diabetic, insulin injections wouldn't harm them. I grant you all but the final injections were harmless, Doctor. Nonsense. My sister certainly didn't die from any injections I gave them. Death in both cases was later, much later. You're positive those injections were harmless? Positive. You wouldn't care to prove it by giving yourself the injection you've just prepared for your brother. Why, I... That is, if I do, I, I, I won't be able to give him his dose. I only have one with me. As you can see, Walter is near collapse. I won't be responsible if he doesn't get his insulin. I prepared for that emergency. Dr. Watson has brought along a small amount of the drug. I'm sure it'll suffice. Well, I... But, but this is really too ridiculous. Well, now, <clears throat> I'm not so sure. You say it won't hurt you to take that insulin. Go ahead and take it. Well, I, I know it don't sound silly, but I've never had the nerve to give myself an injection. Oh, I'd be happy to oblige. No, no, Watson, let me. I'm quite good at it. And I don't want any accidents with the contents of that hypodermic. Now then, give it to me. Give it to me, I say. No, no, you can't make me. You can't. Stand back. Don't anyone touch that broken hypodermic or the fluid it contained. Good Lord. Why not? Unless I'm very much mistaken. It's a particularly deadly culture of tetanus bacteria. I'll just take a sample. Carefully. Between these glass slides. Now, Lestrade, if you'll tell the guard to bring the strongest carbolic acid he can find, I'd say we'll have this case just about washed up. Nice fellow that Robert Weatherby turned out to be, eh, Dr. Watson? But look, why the strychnine in the first sister's cough medicine and the second sister's teacup? Because the symptoms of tetanus poisoning and strychnine poisoning are so remarkably similar. Tetanus takes much longer, of course, to develop. Robert could be sure of being at a safe distance when the death occurred. Mm, diabolical, I'd say. Yes. Holmes suspected tetanus when he heard of Minnie's stiff neck and noticed the contraction of the solar plexus. Those symptoms do not occur in strychnine poisoning. Of course, I should have noticed them too, but what with the presence of strychnine in the cup, it's so easy to jump to the wrong conclusions, which is what Robert Weatherby had counted on. Uh, but again, why did Dr. De Weatherby plant the strychnine? To implicate his brother, who was known to have a quantity in his possession. Mm, nothing like killing off the whole family in one fell swoop. Yes, and he would probably have gotten away with it if Sherlock Holmes hadn't happened along. But uh, now, isn't it about time for that suggestion about next week's story? It certainly is, Dr. Watson. Well, next week, now, let me think. I uh, suppose I tell you about a visit Holmes and I paid to Castle Mortlake and how I was splattered with blood from a famous silver chandelier that was supposed to bleed whenever a catastrophe occurred in the family. It wasn't ordinary blood, however... Yes, that was an adventure in which Holmes' knowledge of bee culture came in very handy. The makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and 1,036 leading stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by Alfred Shirley, and the dramatizations are by Edith Miser. Sherlock Holmes is produced and directed by Basil Lochran. Special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Case of the Bleeding Chandelier. This is Cy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is a mutual broadcasting system.